Jesus was talking with his disciples and he knew that he was trying to tell them. He had told them before and he had to tell them quite a few times before they actually caught on that he was going to have to go to the cross, that he would be uh, crucified on the cross. He went into more detail of all that. But then he said that he would be raised again. But he wouldn't be raised to walk the earth again. He would be raised to go back to be with the Father in glory. John 16 says this, and when he has come, now this is the Holy Spirit that he's speaking of here. Now, some people think that we are um, ignoring the Father, our Heavenly Father, or our Savior, Jesus Christ, if we speak of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's like we can talk about our Father and we should talk about our Savior, but we don't need to emphasize the Holy Spirit. I don't know where that teaching came from other than from the pits of hell. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Then he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now listen, church, this is his purpose. He is as much part of the Godhead as the Father and our Savior Jesus, the Christ. The very essence of God, the spirit of God, the breath of God, who comes to speak the words of truth and life to us. He says, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. That's the job of the spirit. The spirit never speaks of himself. He always comes to glorify the Father and our Savior. He will, when he speaks, he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Now, that's not just when we open the Bible. It is when, he, when we open the Bible. It's not just when we come to worship and the preacher preaches, though I pray the Spirit will anoint His Word today. But it's the gift 24-7 for us. It is God's best that He has given for us. And I pray that we will learn this God's plan is that everyone should live a spirit-filled life from the very moment of conversion, but practically no one does. We go back to working through the energy of, that we've always used in life, our intellect, our emotion, our abilities, our desires, our knowledge, our understanding, and we get saved but then we go back to living the life like we lived it before with just the add-on of God. That's not correct. I was fully dead in my trespasses and sins. And he was so kind to hear or to woo me and to hear my prayer and to save me and make me his own. I was born again of the Spirit. He gave me life, and now my privilege is to walk in His light because He is the light to be together with Him. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Now, Father, I thank You for the time that we have here this morning. I thank You for the worship. You deserve our praise, Lord. Sometimes I think we're just here to give You our leftovers, and I pray that that's not true. I pray that as you give your best for us, oh God, that we would give our best to you. You are high and lifted up. 
The angels are singing your praise. Why can't we? Why shouldn't we? Why aren't we? You are lifted up on the throne in glory, and I pray that you would be lifted up on the throne in our hearts. You are surrounded by all of your treasure. But when you come to join us in worship here today, we are your treasure. The apple of your eye. And Lord, our heart yearns for you. There is no substitute. And Father, forgive us when we give you leftovers. Forgive us when we get so busy that we ignore you. Forgive us that when your Spirit speaks and whispers and calls and seeks to love and guide and direct and feel us, that we're too busy. But Lord, we've sketched out some time. And we've come to this place, and I pray that not only are we here physically, but our spirit is here and open. So Lord, while we're here, and as your word is preached, would you just speak personally? Every heart here needs you. I know that we want you. So Lord, Jesus be Jesus. Father, be over all. Spirit, do what you do. Brag on our Father and our Savior. Illuminate the word. Draw us close. Sir, we would be the better for it. I love you. And I pray that in the next few moments as you speak, we'll realize it, truly how much you love us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn in Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians chapter number 5. We're going to look in verse number 16. If you're there, say amen. Galatians 5, verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. That's a command. It's also a privilege. It's also what we need to be doing. Walk. We are not a monument. We're a movement. We're not to be a statue. We're not to be just something that shows of what happened at some point in time and we look back on it and we say, oh, I'm grateful for when I got saved and this happened to me. Nothing's changed since then. No, no, no. We are a movement. So the Lord gave us His everlasting Spirit to be with us. And He is there. He lives within us. Not just when you pray, but all the time. Not just when you're in difficulty, but in all the time. He's there to help. He is the word it, there is paraclete, which means to come alongside. He comes to join with your spirit. You have a nature, and he has a nature. But you've received the very nature of God, and the Holy Spirit illuminates that. It's like a bright light from heaven that shows us that the Lord that is over every fiber, every cell in all the universe holds the stars in place, gives us the warmth of the sun. He's been doing a good job of that lately, hasn't he? Gives us the refreshing rain. We need a little bit more of that, don't we? I mean, sometimes we just need a holy hug. Sometimes we just need to know that he's close. Sometimes we need direction. We need encouragement. Sometimes we need a no, though we might not want a no. Sometimes we need a no. And sometimes he needs to remind us that the answer is already yes. He can be there for us. He is there for us. I love how the New Living Translation 
uses these verses. Listen to this. Just listen to my words. This is Galatians 5.16 that I just quoted or just read to you in the, in the New King James. Listen as it is in the New Living Translation. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is the opposite of what the Spirit wants. Isn't that just so plain? Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, and you shall not fulfill, you will not do what the sinful nature craves. When we got saved, we already had a human nature. We had already been taught. Our parents taught us. We go to school to be taught. Our culture teaches us. You know, it bothers me that the culture is shouting to our children. Not just our kids, but adults, we should know better. We call this Pride Month. That's a great word that's being used in a different connotation. And our kids are hearing it taught as truth. They need to hear from our culture. They need to hear from heaven's culture. God has a way that's a better way. But we live by what we're taught in this world. What the world thinks what someone else who may have a platform thinks. It bothers me today that celebrities, y'all know who I'm talking about? Now, we don't have to get any more specific because if I just, it could be a, a, an actor or a singer or a sports athlete or anything like that. They're all considered celebrities and you just stick a mic in their, their, their mouth and they just come forth with all this stuff that acts like they know what they're talking about. They ain't got a clue. Or these group of people will get on, a, they'll have their own TV show. And they've got their own agenda or a newspaper that used to just state the news, but now they've got an opinion that they're bringing it in. And, and you can, if I just said one news network, you would have a certain connotation. If I said a different news network, you would have a different connotation. The world is speaking loud, but the Holy Spirit speaks in a whisper. And it is normal for us that from the time that we are born and we begin to understand the things of this world and how we're taught and what, we're see, what we see, we, we understand that that's the knowledge of the world. Just understand this. Please hear this plainly. Satan is called the prince and the power of the air. He has a temporary reign on this earth. Now, let me just give you the end. Jesus is coming back, and he's going to take over, and Satan will never have a word again. But for whatever reason, in the fathomable, unfathomable wisdom of God, he allows Satan to do all that he's doing. And Satan is making this world his playground. And yet, God comes and calls us to himself. Aren't you grateful for salvation, full and free? Aren't you grateful for that wooing of the Holy Spirit that came and spoke to your heart and made you his own? The problem with the Galatian people was Paul went there, preached the gospel, the Holy Spirit shows up in power, and people get saved. And they're living a life uh, of trying to please God. But these other ca people came in and said, look, you need to do more than that. You need to follow all these regulations too. And that sounded a lot like what their old human nature said. We've got laws. We've got commandments. Y'all know what I mean when I say this? Mama said I got to. No, y'all didn't have that mom? Well, I sure did. And when mama said I got to, I better. Right? And if I didn't, there were ramifications. The world says you better. Now, I'm grateful for our law in this country. If we, you know, you never have to have a guilty uh, thought if you just follow and do what the law says. You see those blue lights? Just pull over because he's going after somebody else. 
Amen? You don't have to feel guilty unless you're doing something wrong. The Holy Spirit says, why would you go back? Oh, foolish Galatians, it says in the first verse. Why would you go back? You've been given the, the wisdom of heaven. Anybody need a little bit more than the wisdom of this world? It's okay, I got an answer. His name is Jesus, and he spent sent it by his Spirit. Anybody ever been afraid of the Holy Spirit? Anybody ever seen the Holy Spirit manipulated? Anybody ever uh, see that uh, spooky things happening? Satan's the author of confusion, but not our Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. He doesn't know how to do anything else. Listen, the Holy Spirit does not know how to do anything else than present the beautiful, fulfilled, total glory of the Godhead. It's always good. It's always right. It's always perfect. You can Trust Him. Anything that's a, a, a divergent from that, know the spirits, test the spirits, discern the spirits, and tell Satan to hush. But listen. Grow to understand the Spirit of our Savior. How wonderful and great He really is. You know, it's okay that before salvation we follow the old way, but we need to understand that there's something else that God has for us. And yet, we have daily struggles. And all those things come from our human emotions and our human desires and how we feel every day. Some days we do pretty good. Some days we don't. It's usually based upon whatever we're facing that day. You know, some days we can do pretty good, but in a few moments we can just fully wreck our lives and feel guilty and defeated by sin. Let me read to you from Romans chapter number 7. Oh, Romans 7, I have studied this chapter quite a lot. Listen in verse 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. You ever done something you didn't even know why you did it? Stupid is as stupid does, that great philosopher Forrest Gump. <laughs> for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. Anybody got good intentions, you just don't do it? But what I hate, that I do. The things that you say that you'll never do, but we end up doing... Now, I, nobody's going to laugh at you if you, feel, if you say amen to that because everybody in this room, on every pew in this room, everybody does this. Verse 16, if I then, if then I do what I not, uh, will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. The law tells me it's wrong is what he's saying. Verse 17, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Now, when I got saved, I got forgiven. But I still had that old nature. Now, I've got the Holy Spirit. There's a new nature, but which one of them is leading me and guiding me? He says, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. Nothing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. The evil I will not to do, that I practice. Can y'all agree? Those two natures are battling against each other. The spirit in the old natural man. And we say we want to follow God. We're pretty good in this pew, in the pews here, Right? Most of us can, can keep away from the thoughts of sin while the Bible's being preached. 
But doggone it, when we leave those doors and we go out there, somebody sneaks in and starts throwing curveballs at our emotions and our thoughts. And the things that we want to do, we don't necessarily do. We'll go back to those old sinful thoughts and habits. He says in verse uh, 20, Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it's the sin that dwells in me. I'm going to speak more about that in just a moment. Verse 21, I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God. Can I get an amen? According to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into, what's that word? Captivity. We're being jailed. We're being put in chains by our sinful thoughts and our old way of living. Warring against the law of my mind, bringing them in captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death? I really believe this is a testimony of Paul. I believe this is a, a man who, after he got saved, he wanted to do the right thing. He, he spent three years studying Scripture in the desert. He came back to preach. Nobody wanted to listen to him. He went to Jerusalem. And, and just a few of them, he saw James and, and, and Peter. But he, he really was kind of sent home to Mama. And he spent ten years wanting to do that which was right. I believe he was battling. But when... Barnabas called him to the city of Antioch. God began to use him. And when he began those missionary trips, it was living out what the Holy Spirit would have him to do. Now listen to me now. Listen to me very plainly, very clearly. Listen. He found himself in a situation that he could not do it on his own. And if God didn't help him, he was sunk. He's preaching a message. Somebody's up in the window. And Paul was more long-winded than I am. He preached all night. And the guy falls out of the window, and he's dead. Paul goes down there and lays his body on him and prays over him. And the Spirit of God brought life. Now, folks, if you trip and break your neck here in the aisle, I'm not asking you to and you quit breathing, 25 people in here will call 911 at the same time. Melba will jump on you and give you mouth to mouth. I won't, but Melba will. <laughs> then everybody looks up at me and says, Preacher, come raise him from the dead. Lisa wants me to raise her from the dead. I would find myself in a situation that if the Holy Spirit didn't come in and take over, I'd be sunk. But how much of the normal day-to-day -day living where we chase the flesh, make wrong decisions, act out in anger, live in unforgiveness, envy, have pride, have a quick tongue, not patient, not loving, not kind, no joy, just bitterness. If the Holy Spirit doesn't come in, we're sunk. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. This is the same Holy Spirit that in Genesis, the Father said, let's do this. Jesus said, he spoke it, and the Spirit took those words and made it come alive. Creation. If He can do that, all things are possible through Christ who strengthens me. Now let me separate something very important. There is sin 
and there are sins. We have a sinful nature, S-I-N. That got changed when you got saved. But S-I-N-S is the plural where it's simply the fruit of the old nature. Though you may have your S-I-N, your old nature, saved and redeemed, you've been born again, the S-I-N-S, the old nature, wants to lead your life. And God says, by the same power that I redeemed you, by that same power I will be with you. Listen once again to verse 16. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust, the desires, the cravings of the flesh, the old nature. Our demand is that we walk in the Spirit. How many of you ever saw Crocodile Dundee? How many of you ever heard of Crocodile Dundee? He was an Australian. I, that's the, really the first time I'd heard about it. But, but, but in that movie, he, they talked about having a walkabout. Y'all know that? That's exactly the word for walk. He didn't say, let's just sit here and talk and, and, and then we'll get, get up and go home. He says, let's do a walkabout. So as we live our life is what he's talking about. Everything that you do is what he's talking about. In the morning, and you get up and you begin your day, you have a walkabout. And you have responsibilities, you have duties, you have desires, you have things that... You're, how many of y'all have a to-do list? Now, me and I know you do, because you got. if you're married, you got one. It may be an unfulfilled one, and, and, and that's okay. My wife keeps adding to it. I could have got an amen there, but y'all just let that one go right on by. We have a to-do list. We have a want list. All these things are happening. And he's like, hey, I'm in heaven, but what I do is I'd like to be with you. So let's just have a walk about today. So everything that you do, everywhere that you go, the Spirit of the Lord God is with you. And if you walk with Him, and come on, listen, not to me, to Him, and make up your mind that God can do great and mighty things, all the things that can do. Now, I, I heard a phrase that I, I want to, I don't, I haven't researched this, but I sure do like it. I respected the person who, who said it. I, I, I give them all credit. If I, I think I know who said, I think it was Craig Rochelle, but I'm not sure. I, I don't, I, I'm trying not to claim this for myself, but he calls it the first eight minutes. He probably stole it from somebody else. The first eight minutes of every day. He says, if you'll give God the first eight minutes, I don't know why it's not seven or why it's not 12. I don't know. But he said, if you'll give the first eight minutes of every day, when you wake up, connect with the Lord in the first eight minutes. Now, I'm not talking about simply reading your Bible. <clears throat> I'm not trying to say just same, the same prayer, the same words. I'm trying to say, in your heart, would you just connect with the Lord, praising, thanking, Invite him in. Tell him that you're going to do better and listen. Make up your mind that whatever he says, before he even asks, the answer is yes. In the first eight minutes of every day, you set the tone for how you're going to walk that day. Can we do an experiment? There will be a test. I'm going to ask you next Sunday how many of you did this. And don't you lie. Can we give the Lord the first eight minutes this coming week? Matter of fact, right now between your heart and God, would you just tell the Lord, all right, Lord, when I wake up, you get, you get the first eight minutes. Praise God, this air conditioning just cut off. Eight minutes will control the next day, all the day. Just say, Lord, I'm here. Can we walk? Can we have a walk about today, Lord? 
If you do that, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the wisdom of the old nature. Oh, don't we love our own thoughts? Oh, don't we love our own ways? But oh, what God can do. I'm just going to have to pick up next Sunday. Revelation 3.20 says this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man come and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. That's pretty cool. You know, for years, I've only used this in the con connotation of a person who does not know Jesus Christ and the wooing of the Holy Spirit comes, he stands at the door of their heart and knocks. And if they will just come and allow the Lord to come into their heart, that he will save them. And that's true. But church, it's also true for us Christians. What if the Lord comes and knocks at our heart's door? And if we would just open up that opportunity open up the door he will come in and dine with us we were talking about this in sunday school y'all ever gone to a restaurant and sit down i'm sitting here with my bride across from me and i love her and i look around and these other people are there and they're sitting there husband and wife and he's got his phone she's got her phone the food comes and they thank them for it they begin to eat the food, and every now and again they'll look up just to acknowledge the other person's there. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Sometimes I think the Lord's right there, and we're saying, we, we acknowledge Him, but wouldn't it be good to have a meal together? If He was coming to your house, what would you cook? We discussed this in Sunday school. Kirby Lomax said, fried chicken. <laughs> Steve said, I'll cook him a good steak. Sheila Lomax said, I like black beans. I thought, well, amen, hallelujah. I kind of thought, I'll just give him whatever's leftovers in the refrigerator, you know. We'll just, not that he deserves leftovers. I don't think he cares about having all that. He just wants to spend time with us. Peanut butter and crackers would be okay. If Jesus were there, that would be enough. And we get a chance to have a walkabout with him. Now, I don't know, but I think if the Lord were with me, I'd act a whole lot better. I'd probably control my tongue a lot better. I wouldn't have road rage because I'd look over and he'd be looking at me and, okay, Lord. Anybody need help? Anybody got a friend, the kind of friend that can come and eat with you? And you can just be you. But the great thing is there'll be them. And there's a closeness that's there. Every person when they get saved, at that very moment, God wants to sanctify them. And for them to have a walking relationship with him, a growing, mature relationship. But we just go back to doing whatever we used to do. We got heaven taken care of, so we're good. But we're supposed to put on our heaven suit now and prepare for what God has for us to come. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know what you're missing. But if you're not walking in the Holy Spirit, you don't know what you're missing either.